Hey, this is Steve Bloom, and you are listening to the GeekCast Radio Network. You're tuned in to Steve Megatron on Altered Geek. Hello and welcome to Altered Geek. I'm your host, Steve Megatron Phillips. Today, I'd like to welcome to the program Eric Schumacher, film and TV actor, producer, director, owner of Sealy Studios, and proud geek. Welcome, Eric. Uh, thank you, and I'm very glad to be here. Thanks for having me, Stephen. Yes, thank you for joining me. So, uh, just for the, for the listener's purpose, uh, could you tell the listeners a little bit about yourself? Uh, sure. Um... Well, the short story is I'm uh, I am uh, a geek of many kinds. I'm an acting geek. I'm a filmmaking geek. I'm a a, a geek geek. <laughs> um, I'm uh, I was raised by a family of actors um, and uh, was began my training. Uh, well, the earliest that I remember was six years old. Although my my dad insists it was earlier. Wow. Um, and uh, fell madly in love with the art. And uh, as I um, continued to pursue an acting career, I eventually uh, decided to start studying the uh, the filmmaking side of things as well, mainly so I could better understand how that side worked to be a better actor, and I realized I had some uh, some talents on that side as well, so I started making uh, commercials and movies and a variety of other things. Um, I'm <clears throat> currently, I guess, best known for, uh, I'm one of just a very handful of actors I'm proud to say who have ever played both uh, Doc Holliday and Wyatt Earp in two separate nationally publicized productions. Um, and I uh, am a, a, a big fan of uh, science fiction, fantasy, geek culture sort of stuff that tends to be mainly the, the, bulk, the bulk of what I end up uh, producing and or directing is stuff in that genre. Um, and of course, as you mentioned, I'm, I'm the current... Uh, uh, president of uh, uh, the production group Sealy Studios, um, which uh, tends also to specialize in some of those genres. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I I was I was doing some research earlier, kind of checking out some of the stuff that you guys uh, have have done, and uh, uh, I the the science fiction aspect always piques my interest because I'm I'm huge into sci-fi. I never would have guessed that about you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a sickness, but, uh, yeah, I, you know, Star Trek, sci-fi, Star Wars, time travel, any of that kind of stuff, so it's... You, you can't see me giving you the, the Vulcan live long and prosper symbol right now, but I'm doing it both, with both hands. <laughs> <laughs> Skype has that as an emoji now, which is funny, so, um... What's you talking about, Willis? I didn't know that, that's awesome. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, because I almost did that earlier, and then I was like, I don't know. <laughs> Because it, cool. it transports away. Um, <laughs> so, uh, what what have been some of your? Because I, I I noticed that that Sealy Studios is uh, promoting the My Stolen Time Machine. Uh, yeah, well, that's a that's a project that um, is in post production right now. Uh, we we had a bit of a hitch. Um, unfortunately, my uh, very wonderful business partner Don Dem uh, passed away uh, just a, a couple of months ago after a long battle with cancer, and uh, that was a project that he and I, um, uh, he produced and I directed, um, and in fact, it was the catalyst to me becoming a partner in the company, um, And uh, <clears throat> but uh, that, that we're, we're expecting that to finally launch about the middle of uh, this year. Um, it's, a, uh, it's a science fiction uh, s- uh, short, uh, short episode series, uh, currently about 26 episodes long. Um, and the gist of it is a, uh, uh, a teenage girl genius steals her father's half-made time machine to cheat on a history exam and accidentally almost destroys the universe, making multiple versions of herself throughout time and space, and now she has to work with herself to fix it. Wow. If, if it weren't <laughs> for the fact I'm, I'm very into sci-fi, like, time travel aspect, that would sound very uh, confusing. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine your audience won't find it confusing. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. I, I've, I've given them the lowdown on a, a screenplay I wrote similar to, um, well, not similar. It's it's mm-hmm. past and future, but it's superhero based and in time mm-hmm. travel. So I, I wrote that in a uh, college course. So that was great. 
um, very convoluted. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. So, yeah. um, so what are what are some uh, ins- inspirations for your for your various projects, whether it's it's uh, acting or or writing and directing? Uh, well, you know, I think uh, that's a difficult question to answer. It really depends on the project, but uh, um, there are projects that I partner, uh, or we, I should say, partner with others on, and sometimes they're brought to us, and we and we partner in producing them. Other times, they're things that we generate ourselves. Um, I would I would say that you know, since I'm now in charge of things, <laughs> um, the uh, you know the the types of projects that we initiate uh, tend to be um, tend to be on, on typically science fiction, fantasy. What we look for in a project that we want to sink our teeth into is a, a unique angle, a unique twist, and a, and a statement about something that will hopefully generate uh, conversation. Um, so, you know, for example, my soul and time machine. When we, when Don and I created that series, the intention was to, in fact, create, a, you know, kind of a girl time traveler before Doctor Who did, and uh, um, we uh, we wanted to um, uh, we wanted to to have a, a, a female led show that was very much that had the side effect of uh, exploring a young a young woman as she finds out who she really is and uh and so the fact that she has multiple selves allows her to examine um who she is as a person and who she could be as a person if she if she makes the right moves or the wrong moves and examine her own insecurities through a um you know a, a, a comedic script and uh, so we're always looking for things that uh have personal meaning to uh to our audience and and things that uh we feel deserve to be explored in, in, in a unique way. Um, in terms of my work as an actor, though, it's, uh, you know, of course, part of it is what I'm offered. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but I've, uh, especially since I'm, you know, now running the company, I'm, I'm being very picky about what I take on because I just, I don't have a lot of extra time. So I really have to make sure the projects that I agree to as an actor are things that I believe have, uh, some artistic worth or are particularly well paying or good for the career, you know. Um, and, uh, um, so I'm, you know, I, 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 I certainly, uh, the opportunity to play, uh, Doc Holiday a couple of years ago, that was, that was one I wasn't going to pass up, especially since it was, uh, uh, directed by Alex Cox, who's a very, um, uh, a brilliant man. And you, you may know him from Repo Man and Sid and Nancy and, a bunch of really amazing films like that, um, and uh, so I'm, I, you know, likewise as an actor though, if if I have my choice, if I have my brothers, I'm I'm looking for stuff that allows me, well, for for one, and also to go into a, I like going into a deep character or a meaty character. I'm, I'm one of those actors who um, tends to disappear into a role. Um, I've when I've gotten, uh, I've, I've I've been very honored that some of my filmmaking friends. Have seen me in principal roles and things, and didn't realize it was me until the credits. Um, and that that was that was about the nicest thing I could ever have said to me. <laughs> Those are um, always the most amazing roles to me, are the ones that can blend in like a chameleon. Yeah, yeah, and they're the most for me. They're the most gratifying to play, typically, because um, you know it, it allows me to really kind of uh, it forces me to take a completely different person's perspective in life and and find a way to play that truthfully um which means that i the side effect is that, that i grow as a person because i'm not just you know playing some part some uh so, something that's so close to me that there's not a lot of necessary emotional growth you know mm-hmm. um, mind you that being said i mean the right you know the right thing that is kind of close to me i'll i'll take we just uh, uh we're we're finishing final post-production after a a soft world premiere um, of the feature film Revenge of Zoe, which is incidentally set largely in a comic book store and involves an imaginary superheroine and screenwriting. It's a really funny comedy um, co-produced with uh, uh, TV's meteorite men's Jeffrey Notkin and uh, Marty Campbell and Cliff Gatola of uh, Pondo Enterprises. And uh, I played a character in that that was actually 
a lot like me maybe 20 years ago, <laughs> um, you know, uh, and actually still fairly a lot like me, uh, kind of uh, among uh, my real personality tends to be the type that's very kind of driven and serious and uptight, and um, and this character was that to the to the to the nines, and uh, um, and also a you know an uber geek, so. <laughs> Yeah, it, that's that's definitely uh, uh, awesome. Getting to uh, t- to kind of feel it out and be able to play yourself, and in, in a sense, like it, throughout whatever role you're playing. Mm-hmm. What were what were some of the uh, characters that that have inspired you when when you've gone into character, when you've you've gone into your your blending mode? Well, that's a good question. Um, I rarely look at the work of others when I'm going into character unless I have a very specific reason to do that. I, I try to, I try to, um, so I kind of try not to, to reference too much other people's work at all um, and instead just go into a process of um, building a person from the ground up. And, uh, but certainly, I mean, you can't help but be influenced a bit by other people's work or by other characters. Um, so, I mean, I, I think as I was uh, a decent example of that is when I was playing uh, Wyatt Earp for a television show called Legends and Lies, The Real West for Fox. Um, I, I, I do recall mentally referring to some of the better kind of tough guy roles that I'd seen played over the years. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of the scenes with Wyatt were him intimidating somebody, and so I uh, I, I remember looking at the way that uh, maybe Sylvester Stallone had played a role, or looking at you know I didn't necessarily go and watch the films. I just kind of remembered the scenes and thought about you know how did they come across as unflappable and very tough, um, and then the rest again was just a lot of character research and trying to figure out who I thought this person was and how they would emerge through me that's awesome yeah i i'm uh, having looked at your your uh, list of of credits it, it's made me uh want to um go back and watch uh some of the series or some of the films that you've you've been in because uh reading the premise of a lot of them just has me interested uh thank you uh and and like the the revenge of Zoe, like that has me interested a little bit. Like I'm, I'm I, I love any time like comics or or just uh, different things that you just nor- don't normally see mm-hmm. kind of come out anymore because it seems like everything is like uh, a continuation of a franchise at this point. Very true. Uh, yeah, I, I know exactly what you're talking about, and that's actually as we're building uh, Sealy Studios and and moving our current plans forward that's that's a lot of our goals are to help uh get very um unique and and yet very and and unique good stories out there that are not necessarily just a, a re-paste you know not not cut paste repeat necessarily you know we're, we we like the idea of of um um uh, creatively i suppose you could as to quote my kung fu grandmaster having wings of mind and um but you know, and certainly not, not in a way that's uh, that's just a, you know, a disorganized mess. They still have to be th- projects that people can understand and that are commercially viable. But uh, you know, I'm always again looking for that unique concept. That, or, or, I mean, if, if there is really anything unique anymore, but something that's not just uh, um, the, the the standard. If we're doing a superhero storyline, I don't want to do the standard superhero storyline. Where um, much as I love a lot of the more recent superhero releases about five minutes in, I can tell you the entire plot line and most of the dialogue. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's that, gotten pretty formulaic. It has. And that can be satisfying. I mean, that's the payoff that I want emotionally if I'm going to see that particular kind of movie, but there's a point where it's like, you know, okay, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying the visual ride and the performances are good, but I have seen this movie, <laughs> <laughs> you know, what are what are some projects that you you enjoy taking on? Whether it's it, do you enjoy doing feature films or or web series uh, or uh, I, I saw in their animation. 
Uh, we've done, you know, so we've done some animation. That was uh, the bulk of the animation that was done in the past was under Don's leadership, and I wasn't directly involved with most of those, although it's stuff we can do. Um, but I do love animation projects, and I've, I, I should add, by the way, that I, you know, I'm also a, a voice actor, and one of my teachers, um, some of your audience might remember, was a gal who uh, passed away um, recently, Lucille Bliss, who was the original Smurfette on the NBC cartoon show. Oh, wow. And, uh, yeah, she was, she was awesome <laughs> and kooky. And um, and so that was from, she was where I learned cartoon voiceover. Um, so I, I dig that stuff. I just I haven't had a lot of opportunity to do um, cartoon animation as a producer. But, um, uh so I, th- I in, to answer your question though, um, yes, <laughs> I like it all. It just kind of you know when I when when we are generating a, when we're working on what projects we're going to put onto our slate, um, you can kind of uh, to me I, I guess this is where the gut comes in. Um, we might be given a screenplay and it's like this is amazing. I'm, I've, I've optioned a couple just recently that are fantastic and they're perfect as films uh there are things that we start developing and uh and we look at them and i can kind of go okay yeah this smells like a series i i I want more time to tell this story um and i think that's what's going to sell here or or this feels like a feature film and that's how we're going to develop this Uh, so really it just kind of comes down to what is the right media to tell that story and that's what I like. <laughs> but I can tell you that I, I am particularly fascinated by the concept of the web series, which now is a television series. Let's face it, it's, you know, it's all blended. Oh, yeah. Um, and I love the idea, uh, in principle, I love the idea of being able to really spend a lot of time with characters and really, really get to know them over time and really, really, you know, uh, I, I do really enjoy the feature film um process and i really enjoy watching a feature film i but you know if i had to choose between the two artistically then i would probably go with with the series concept just because um you know i i like if, if i really love the characters i want to be with them for a while yeah i i can totally relate to that i uh... I mean, there, there's the potential with film, but there's it's you're still kind of limited to to the amount of story you can tell with that that block of space, as yeah. opposed to the web series or the the television series. You got to have beginning, middle, and end in a certain amount of time, and and it's, I mean, you do still have to cut uh, it's cut stuff or or not not use certain concepts you come up with in the series capacity, but there's just so much more breadth that you can put into a series and uh, and and so and it, it allows you to take your time a little bit more. Awesome. So, what are, what are some uh, projects that that may not be listed or that you can speak about that that you have coming up? Uh, that I can speak about. That's a good one. <laughs> um, well, um, we are also working on doing a final launch uh, target for. A uh, uh, anarcho crime drama short series called El Patron the Master, um, which was uh, co-produced with a number of great people who shall become evident soon. Um, and actually, that was uh, that went through a film festival run recently and won some awards. Awesome. Um, uh, Revenge of Zoe, of course, have talked about. Um, we are uh, in the process of um, doing a lot of audiobooks right now. And um, and I'm working on a program that I can say very little about, I'm afraid, uh, that is somewhat related um, in partnership with uh, um, my friend, author, and publisher, David Lee Summers, who's a fantastic uh, sci-fi uh, horror and steampunk author. Um, and uh, we're, so we're creating some really exciting programs that are designed to help um, grow the work of authors. And I, I can't say too much more about that, but I will say that uh, audiobooks are a part of that, um, and uh, um, and and we're working on a number of those right now. Um, and this is really, you know, I think overall, um, I was developing a strategy with 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 Don before he passed away, and ultimately what it came down to was the concept of, you know, we really believe that artists 
working together in the right way, in ways that make sense commercially, and in ways that uh, that make sense uh, in terms of doing honor to each other, um, allows everyone to win. So we were developing a strategy which we're in the process of launching that is designed to help uh, a lot of artists have, uh, have better careers and uh, and to also create a lot of really excellent media for audiences. And, um, and that's why I have essentially no life right now. I'm just, I just work all the time. <laughs> it's a very difficult strategy to launch, but, uh, but it is, uh, we believe it can work very, very well. And, uh, I'm quite, quite excited about it. I look forward to, to seeing how that, that, uh, turns out. I, I'm a fan of audiobooks, especially because, uh, of commute times. It just makes it easier to, to listen to something, uh, on the go, no matter where you're at. Um, so that's mm-hmm. that's always something that interests me, um, and then uh, the voice acting aspect, um, whether it's whether it's reading or it's voice acting in in the audiobooks, uh, that always uh, piques my interest. Uh, but I, I, us on the network, we we really enjoy uh, voice actors, so that's mm-hmm. uh, something that resonates really well with us. Right. Well, we you know a, a big key to. I mean, we're doing a lot more than just audiobooks, and we're doing a lot of video work, et cetera. But a big key to a good uh, audiobook, I, I mean, it, it's a performance. Uh, mm-hmm. Even if it's one actor reading, it's still an actor, ideally reading. If it, you know, if it's a fiction book, and 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 if it's a nonfiction book, it's still a performance. It, it, there needs to be um, there's there's both a matter of technical performance skill that needs to go into it, and there needs to be heart. Uh, and I think you know, heart is the major. The major point that you know it's it's got to be a heartfelt performance or it's not going to engage um it's not going to to resonate and uh that field is just too competitive right now to to do any less than than your best you know exactly so how can the listeners get a hold of you and and find out more about you and in sealy studios online well, uh, I am all over the place. I'm on uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, etc. Um, I am. Uh, you can go to my personal actor website at ericschumacherfilm.com. Uh, Schumacher is S C H U M A C H E R. Um, for those of you who don't aren't native German speakers, <laughs> um, uh, and. Uh, uh, of course, uh, we have uh, two other websites, well, three really right now, uh, sealystudios.com, that's S-E-E-L-I-E. Uh, that site, by the way, is being completely rebuilt, so it's uh, it's an older site that you'll see right now, but, it, but it's going to have a lot of exciting things on it very soon. And uh, also our website, pulpgamer.com, which is uh, um, about uh, largely targeted to the uh, board game and role-playing game uh analog gaming world, uh, which was where Don came out of, actually. Um, and, uh, uh, and of course, uh, to find out more about the film Revenge of Zoe, there's revengeofzoe.com. Uh, Zoe is Z-O-E. Um, and that site is, uh, uh, is nearly fully built <laughs> as we're getting ready to launch the film. Um, but uh, ericschumacherfilm.com is a good sort of central place for people to find me. And, of course, uh, just look me up on, uh, on social media and um, I'm, I'm not hard to find there. And, and I, um, <clears throat> if folks want to reach out to me directly, um, you know, I, I tend to be a little bit slow on getting back to people because I get a lot of messages. But I do really try hard to get back to everyone. Uh, and I'm always happy to hear from folks uh, who are fellow artists or, you know, would-be fans or people who already know my work or whatever. It's, uh, you know, I'm, I, I like people. <laughs> as, as do we. Uh... Mm-hmm. So I, I thank you, Eric, for taking the time uh, out of your, your busy schedule to hang out with us here on Altered Geek. My pleasure. Uh, so uh, until next time, get altered, get geeky with the Altered Geeks. <laughs>